Thank you very much, Neil, for the, for the very nice introduction. And, and thank you very much to the Microbiology Society for awarding me this prize. I'm, I'm very honoured. And it's really a testament to all my colleagues over the years. And in particular, I have to thank everybody, all the great people who, who have been in my lab, past and present, because without them, none of the data that you're about to see would exist. OK, so today I'm going to tell you about the type 6 secretion system and how serratia marcescens uses it for bacterial warfare. So just a reminder um, by what we mean by protein secretion. So in gram-negative bacteria, protein secretion is defined as the controlled movement of a particular set of proteins across both bacterial membranes to the outside of the bacterial cell. In some cases, these secreted proteins are released to the extracellular medium, but in other cases, they're actually injected directly into a target cell. Secretion is carried out um, by a variety of different protein machineries. Um, the most common six types are depicted here. And any given bacteria will have a different number and complement of these types of systems depending on its niche and its lifestyle requirements. And the proteins themselves that are secreted, there's a huge range of, of different types of um, secreted proteins. And why do we care? Well, protein secretion and, the, and the, so the proteins that are secreted and the secretion systems that deliver them are hugely significant for bacterial interactions with the host, with the environment, um, and with other bacterial cells. So they're absolutely key um, to virulence and host interactions. Um, so secreted proteins can include hydrolytic enzymes, um, effector proteins that manipulate host cell signaling pathways. They can mediate interactions with the abiotic environment, nutrient scavenging in all different contexts, and they can also be involved um, in killing rival bacteria. So the type 6 secretion system is a very widespread system in lots of gram-negative bacteria. It's estimated to be in at least a third of all gram-negative bacteria, and some strains have more than one system. And the basic function of the type 6 secretion system is to deliver toxic effector proteins directly into target cells. In some cases, these target cells are host eukaryotic cells when the type 6 system acts as a classical virulence factor. But it's now believed that the primary and the major function of almost all type 6 secretion systems is in interbacterial competition. So one bacterial cell will use its type 6 system to deliver antibacterial toxins into a rival bacterial cell. And it's becoming increasingly appreciated that these systems can play a really key role in shaping polymicrobial communities of all kinds. And so how does the type 6 system work? Well, it's a large um, protein nanomachine, um, a contractile nanomachine, whose basic function is to propel a pun cell puncturing structure out of the secreting cell and towards a target cell. It can actually breach the target cell, or if there is no target cell there, it can simply release all the proteins to the extracellular media. This puncturing structure is made up of three proteins. Um, so a tube made up of stacked rings of a protein called HCP, and tipped with a sharp spike of a VGRG protein with a little sharp tip of a PAR protein right on the top. And in order to mediate effector translocation, these effectors decorate this puncturing structure in a variety of different ways um, in order to be delivered. So some effectors are what we call specialized. So these are special extra copies of VGRG or PAR proteins with an additional C-terminal covalently refused toxin domain. Other effectors are what we call cargo effectors. Um, these are standalone effectors um, which interact non-covalently with the puncturing structure, either sitting in the lumen of the HCP tube or associated with the outside of the VGRG spike. And so this delivery is achieved um, through the assembly of this large um, membrane-based complex. So first of all, um, an integral membrane complex made of TSS, J, L, and M is assembled. Onto this docks a base plate-like structure, in the middle of which is the VGRG spike protein. The HCP tube can then be assembled on top of that, away into the cytoplasm, and simultaneously around it is assembled um, an extended contractile sheath made of two proteins called TSSB-C. Then, in a rapid and very powerful firing step, um, the sheath contracts and propels the puncturing structure out of the cell. Subsequently, um, a specialized ATPase called TSSH um, specifically depolymerizes the contracted sheath to allow recycling of the sheath subunits and then reuse and recycling of the machinery in another round of firing. Now, if all this is sounding a little bit familiar, then you'd be right. 
because it was realized fairly on in the type 6 story that there's um, an intimate relationship between the contractile mechanism of a type 6 system and a contractile bacteriophage tail sheet, um, tail, the contractile bacteriophage tail. So as you can see up here, we've got T4. We've basically got a contractile sheath um, which propels the tail tube and the tail spike into a bacterial cell. And then if you imagine turning that round and anchoring it into the membrane, you essentially end up with a type 6 secretion system where you have the contractile sheath propelling the tube and spike out of the bacterial cell. And indeed, we now have a reasonable amount of structural information about parts of the type 6 system um, which really back this up. Um, so the uh, structure of VGRG PAR is essentially identical to that of the phage tail spike. HCP is essentially the same as the uh, phage tail tube. The TSSBC sheath is very similar to the phage tail tube. Um, and there's quite a lot of similarity between parts of the type 6 base plate and the phage base plate. But of course, it's not as simple as that. The bacteria has picked it up, adapted it, integrated it, and built on it. And we have other parts, in particular um, this membrane complex, and also things like regulatory systems, uh, recycling of the sheath, etc.